Okay, good morning. Well, the time here is starting to wrap up. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about the situation in uh, Mosul. Uh, you know, um, all of us are seeing seeing stuff here. We're seeing you know, formations overhead, and uh, and uh, I'm not reporting about it because it seems to me that I should be reporting about it after the fact and not while it's happening. I mean, I don't really think that there's ISIS uh, on Facebook in Mosul uh, checking out what Carl says, but nevertheless, I I just feel like. I'm not military, I should not report it until after the fact. So after the fact is, uh, right now, um, it's a huge push. Uh, the first day, 3,000 people were freed. Um, the day after that, um, uh, apparently ISIS tried to reclaim some lost territory in uh, the old city, part of the old city, and, and um, were repulsed. Uh, and then the Grand Mosque in the old city, which has been the headquarters, uh, for ISIS in that area uh, was taken yesterday. Um, it's not just uh, significant because it's a big part of the city, uh, but it's significant because uh, that is where the caliphate was declared. So it's uh, kind of like at the heart of the beast, at least one of the hearts. The other one's in Roca and in Syria. Anyway, so um, that still means that there's there's lots of fighting. There aren't that many ISIS fighters apparently uh, left, which is good. Um, I know in a lot of my groups we talk about being neutral about political things, and I gotta say I'm not remotely uh, neutral uh, in, in this. Uh, there clearly is uh, a bad guy, and all I have to do is talk to the people at the camps uh, about all their children and husbands and uh, neighbors who were horribly killed often uh, in front of them on purpose as a lesson to the, the whole village and uh, I'm not I'm not neutral at all and so um, <clears throat> when I see the swath the huge swath of destruction it just goes on and on and on um, this country is not going to begin to heal until uh, that pretend caliphate is gone so not neutral wishing you yeah, know praying and, and uh, for the safety of the uh, Iraqi Peshmerga ally coalition forces. Uh, as I'm talking right now, I'm seeing lots and lots of smoke uh, outside the city here in Erbil. I'm, I'm hoping that's just a regular fire. I have no idea. Um, yesterday when I was walking to the office, um, you know, I'm in t Italian village and Italian village is this gated community with a big fence around it. And every house has a wall. There's a gate with a military in the front gate. Um, it's a very protective place that's out by the, uh, expressway and, uh, away from the city. Okay. Uh, what I, what I didn't appreciate is, um, uh, that's hardly the end of its protection. Uh, when you walk along the, the wall going towards the offices, uh, what you see is beyond the wall is a large earth embankment uh, with another wall with lots of bar barbed wire. And I thought, what could they possibly be worried about? But back in the day, two years ago, when um, ISIS um, was taking over so much of uh, Iraqi territory, uh, they got really close to here. They got to the almost to the airport before they were stopped, which is, uh, you know, 15 minutes from here. And so um, I appreciate that uh, extra layer of protection. I have to say I'm a, I'm a city boy, and, and living out what amounts to uh, suburbia drives me nuts. I like getting into the city. Uh, the other thing is that you can see this is a, a, a country that goes through busts and booms. Uh, because there's an enormous amount of skyscrapers, uh, beautiful, creative, uh, but there's also uh, an almost equally amount of skyscrapers that were started and abruptly stopped. And so you have these gigantic shells. Uh, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm looking beyond uh, our rooftop to across the wall that I told you about. And there's this really, really big building with sky bridges that kind of look like Grey's Anatomy. Uh, and and it's empty, and it's a sixty-five million dollar hospital. Uh, and once it got done, they realized they didn't have budgeting for doctors, and so this edifice that looks wonderful is stands there 
an empty shell. Well, these these all these buildings that were just abruptly stopped were because the the price of oil stopped or went down. <clears throat> when we drive to camp, we go past um, a, a lot of uh, housing that was abruptly stopped. We even go past uh, an enormous um, amusement park with a Ferris wheel and trees in this desert and stuff, and um, nothing. It just also uh, abruptly stopped. Uh, that's because of oil, but then there's also the the price of the war. You also see the resilience because uh, as you go towards Mosul and it's really clear that fighting's taking place and even when that's over, you've still got lots of other areas in um, uh, Syria proper to, to, to uh, fight, like Kirkuk. Um, even with the fighting going on, people who can are farming. Uh, people in uh, uh, East Mosul had cows and sheep and mules in the city because that's where they had to have them right now. Um, so uh, it's kind of an interesting place. Yesterday I spent my day uh, at the office finishing up my report. There's more I could add and, and maybe if I have time I will or I could add it from at home but it's it's a report for me to hand off to the people who are going to be here permanently so they can you know play with it fine-tune it. Hopefully it's a, it's a living document and and not just busy work. I don't, I don't think it is. Um, and then uh, in the uh, afternoon, uh, a number of us uh, finally went out to the Citadel. And the Citadel is built on a tell. And for those of you who aren't in archaeology, a tell is a mound of earth that has been where a civilization uh, dies and another one grows over it and over it and over it and over it. So as you dig down the tell, you get to all different levels of history. So there's this big tell uh, in downtown uh, Herbal. Uh, and on the top of it, of the citadel, are all these houses and buildings and mosques. And most of it's ruins that are being repaired. It's considered one of the oldest continuously inhabited sites in the world. I've been to Varanasi. I've been to a number of these places, so I, so I get that. Um, but this one has a limited amount of people um, at the top. And so their goal is to make sure there's at least eight families living there so they can always claim that title of constantly continually in, inhabited. Uh, but we're there and we're looking at the runes, which were really very cool, and uh, from all different um, eras. And um, then uh, we went to a textile museum, and I wasn't like, like, like keen on it. Oh, let's go look at fabrics. Uh, you know, uh, let's go to Michael's um, uh, or Joanne Fabric or something. Um, but it really was national pride, and it was elegant, and bright, and beautiful. And it was a, a museum in a building that had really neat lines and curves and stairways. And and then we went upstairs to the cafe and sat on the floor. And uh, you know, I had you know, tea with cardamom and uh, cinnamon in it, and <clears throat> it was just really good. It was good company. It was a beautiful place. And then when we were done with the, the top of the citadel, we walked down uh, and we went down to the bazaar and uh, shopped around there a little bit, looked around there a little bit, uh, ate, looked at the fountains. Uh, it was just a nice, nice night that was very necessary. Hopefully tonight uh, we'll go to the Christian quarter, but if we don't do that tonight, we'll do it really soon. Um, but it's nice to have those balances. As I'm talking to you right now, the fire that I'm talk that I'm seeing, the black smoke in the horizon, is just enormous. Uh, I hope it's industrial. Uh, that that's the other thing. When you go into the areas that were held by dice, um, you what you see is um, all these oil fields that um, have been destroyed because you know the Iraqis had to take them away from ISIS, which you know it helped fund ISIS's um, provide revenue for their pretend uh, caliphate. So um, anyway, so today I go to camp and uh, I'll be doing inventory, but the other part is I'll be talking to the guys who, uh, the the uh, camp residents who work at the, um, the hospital. And that's because uh, they all have a lot of things to talk about. They all have uh, tremendous uh, histories. And um, when I talk about or hint about the the horrible things that these people have seen, I, I don't go into any details because I suppose it would be interesting to hear, um, but really it would just be um, triggering 
all the vets that I know and anyone else who's been abused, and it would be, uh, I think, uh, cheapening what they went through to say, ooh, let's have a Facebook moment, let me tell you about this, can you tap this? It's, it's not like that at all, and, and when you hear it, some of the stuff I hear I wish I had never heard. Um, anyway, so I'll be talking to these guys and, uh, and making recommendations uh, uh, for how to best use uh, the, the mental health clinic. Um, lots and lots of work is going on. The, the um, oxygen was uh, put in yesterday and the holes were made in the, in the walls to, to put in the air conditioners and things are being connected and inventory is being done and uh, so there's lots of movement. It's, it's going to be a really neat cool place. We got two new people that came in last night. Uh, Liz uh, went back to Denmark uh, this morning <clears throat> and uh, so we're always in, in flux and change here. And I think that's all for right now. And I wish I could tell you just how massive the fire is that I'm seeing. It just, it's taking up the, the whole horizon. And, and I can smell it from here and it must be, it must be miles and miles away. I hope we don't have to drive through it. Um, anyway, so that's all. Take care. And um, missing home, missing family, missing a certain turtle and two cats. Um, talk to you later. Take care. Ciao.